people say that uh, you you actually have a capability of winning. However, uh, most people perceive that even if you win a, in a in a clean elections, civil society will not accept it. First question. Um, well, then civil society is uncivil if they don't accept the fact that I can win in a clean election. Yeah, uh, because of course you, you know for then that's not civil society anymore. It's uncivil society already. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I couldn't uh, help it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. Uh, I do share the same opinion. But uh, okay, um, given that, within the first 100 days, uh, what would be your priority measures? Uh, you know, the, the priority program, right? And also, how would you resolve that situation if it occurs? Because before, in 19, if I, I remember correctly, in 1992, Fidel Ramos, uh, the former president, won as a minority president. Right. And there was this uh, political uh, turmoil at that time, uh, okay. instigated by uh, Miriam Defender San Santiago, who yeah. claims to be cheated. Right. Right. So, and the current political situation right now is that uh, the other camps, particularly right. the liberal and the Are already conditioning, mindset of conditioning the mindset right. of people that, uh, you know. Well, the uh, first thing to do really is to try to achieve as much more political. Uh, consensus as possible after the election. That's the first thing that you really have to do, uh, realistically speaking, be besides choosing your cabinet, implementing your programs, uh, concentrating on certain issues, you will have to have that political harmony and try to get a, a at least a, a, a bit of civility between those who are contesting an election, if possible. And that goal of political consensus, political harmony, political uh, unity does not stop. It, 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 it's, it's a going it's a going activity, an ongoing activity, not merely for presidential contenders, but in terms of political parties. I, I think you owe it also to your political party to build that kind of harmony. Now the programs, as I, I've been saying, with that several pressing issues facing the Philippines, you cannot afford to concentrate on any single one. There are a lot that you need to implement the first day. For example, basic education reform, we, we, in accordance with the basic education roadmap, which uh, was uh, evolved by a committee, a com commission on basic education, I think, then headed by uh, Father Benvenido Neves, who came out with a study. It says that you have to reform your basic education content-wise, curriculum-wise, because your high school graduate is not aligned with an international high school graduate or an ASEAN high school graduate, which will add probably two years. One year in elementary, one year in high school. You have to evolve a preschool program. Preschool program means uh, that is devolved to local government units. You have your day care, work, day care workers, but they, the preschool children do not receive any uh, academic instruction, if at all. No, some do, some don't. But in China, for example, two-year-olds are already taught under sponsorship of the state computer li literacy skills and English language skills. No? I think you want to have to see the seeds of introducing such kind of service here. Now, uh, I, I think there's going to be uh, some, a lot of work needed to be done to introduce the new curriculums that are required because it not only works on the point of view, from the point of view of a student, but from the point of view of teachers also. You have to retrain and re-motivate our teachers, but there's no choice because we, 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 we really have to align our educational standards to international standards and unfortunately our system now does not do that. As I said earlier, maybe English as a second language is not enough to be competitive now. You may need to add more. All right. So you, you need to take care of the poorest of the poor. Right now, 700,000 families are under the care of the 4P program of TSWD under uh, then Secretary S.P. Cabral and the President. It's called Pantawid Familia ng Pangulo program, meaning to say you get conditional cash transfers to the poorest of the poor so that they do certain things. Uh, those certain things, among, more notably, are not to force their children to work, but to send them to school. Uh, the, the goal is to expand the coverage of this program to about a million families. Now, 
There is an attempt in Congress, though, to institutionalize this program. I feel that they should just give the funding to the DSWD and not try to institutionalize the program because you don't want to institutionalize poverty. Okay, you want to see them graduate. Thirdly, you'll have to continue managing the agricultural sector, even our rice supply, very, very well. Uh, I mean, food security is a goal which doesn't stop. happens every day. Fourth, you got to continue with your uh, logical connections of the public infrastructure program that has been done already. You have to continue the seamless interconnections between NLEX and SLEX. You have to continue with the extension of NLEX. You have to continue uh, roads and bridges programs in, in places like Sama, like Surigao del Sur, like Sambuanga del Sur, for some places this first time people have seen roads. So it's vitally important that we do that. Now, we have to introduce also next generation thinking in our infrastructure. For example, right now we're at, at the mindset of the Roro. But we see what happens when a ship sinks and uh, traffic stuck five kilometers long to go to a pier like Calapan. We have to think and start the seeds of a next generation of thinking, near, namely bridges between islands and tunneling between islands. That's the only way that we can have the competitive advantage with our neighbors or to keep a pace of it. And we say that it's still far, far away, but Hong Kong has it, Malaysia has it, and I, I think the Philippines will not be an exception. It should have it. Uh, notably, for example, uh, connections between Bohol and Cebu, Cebu and Negros, Surigao del, Su, uh, del Norte to Southern Leyte, and the like. Uh, you'll have also to continue strengthening your tripartite system in labor relations, industrial pieces and necessity. You will have to enhance the responsible participation of both labor and capital in increasing industrial harmony. Your peace and order situation is critical too. You have to continue with the program of uh, re-indoctrinating our soldiers for internal security operations from an ideological war to that of crime fighting. You'll need to continue mapping up loose firearms on a sustainable basis. I said a sustainable basis and it will take a whole hour to lecture on that. Because it's easy to disarm a group when you leave, they'll rearm once again and it's not that easy depending on the size of an armed group. You'll need a 10 to 1 advantage to keep your soldiers safe. You'll need to introduce your universal participative healthcare programs and plug the gaps in transaction costs in the current healthcare system. You'll need to rationalize that. You'll need to expand the base to mandatory coverage for all Filipinos and other permanent residents. You'll need to do something about the 42 billion pesos in debt owed by our farmers. You'll need to do something about our public sector to motivate our public sector employees. You'll need to take a grip very, very seriously immediately on our international relations, enhancing peaceful relations with all countries and try to leverage our existing relations to the best of our our advantage, of course, on an arm's length basis and on the basis of a realization that countries have their own needs and we can only meet halfway where it is to our mutual benefit. And you need also immediately to fast track the implementation of the renewable and sustainable energy roadmaps that are a result of the renewable energy law you will also have to study alternative forms of energy to include nuclear power. Best example of a country that did it recently is the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi. Recent investment of $25 billion with Korea to establish nuclear power plants in an oil exporting country for also a principal reason that they feel nuclear energy is safer and cleaner than fossil fuels. Uh, probably I, I have a whole list of other things, but I think uh, those not in order of priority are quite important. Okay, thank you, Pat.